Hello, this is Claire Lopez and the Truth Report brought to you by American Truth Project. As the grim date of September 11 approaches once again and we pay tribute to the heroes of that day as well as the thousands of innocent lives lost, harmed and changed forever, it is also time to hold accountable those who are responsible for that atrocity. For even as we pause to remember, United States envoys are engaged in discussion about withdrawing from Afghanistan with some of the very perpetrators of the 9-11 attacks who are now putting forth their demands at talks in Doha, Qatar. I'm talking about senior leadership of the Taliban, including Hirkola Saeed Wali Khairkhawa, who was the governor of the Afghan province of Herat pre-9-11 and was captured and sent to Guantanamo Bay afterward later to be among the five Taliban jihadis exchanged for the release of the traitor Bo Bergdahl. Herat is the westernmost province of Afghanistan and borders on Iran. Part of this governor's responsibilities in the months leading up to the 9-11 attacks was to help organize joint operational planning meetings among Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, and Iran. Yes, Iran. The jihadist Iranian regime in Tehran, and especially the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, its Quds Force unit, and the Ministry of Intelligence and Security, or MOIS, the Iranian Intelligence Service, were all deeply involved in the conception of the 9-11 attacks, the recruitment and training of the hijackers, and the provision of safe haven to Osama bin Laden, many of his fighters, and their families after they and the Taliban were driven from power in Afghanistan in late 2001. Many who are watching here today probably do not know that it was the Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini who first conceived of the idea to attack the United States using passenger airplanes. He called it Shaitan Dar Atash, or Satan in the Flames. But Khomeini died before his evil plot could be realized. It was his successor, the current supreme leader of Iran, the Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, who actually supervised the development of plans that led to the 9-11 attacks. First came the formal alliance among the Iranian regime, Hezbollah, and Al-Qaeda that took place in the early 1990s under the Muslim Brotherhood regime of Omar al-Bashir, the recently ousted ruler of Sudan. The 9-11 Commission report refers to these meetings and describes how the Al-Qaeda leadership, including Osama bin Laden, had found safe haven in Sudan after Saudi Arabia turned him away from returning home after the end of the 1980s war in Afghanistan against the Soviet Red Army. In Khartoum, Osama bin Laden complimented the Iranian president, who was also there, Ali Akbar Hashemi Rafsanjani, on the devastating use of suicide truck bombs by the Iranian Shiite terror proxy Hezbollah in 1983 attacks against the U.S. and French embassies, French forces, and the U.S. Marine Corps barracks in Beirut. So in response to bin Laden's request, Rafsanjani tasked Imad Mugniya, his top Hezbollah terror chief, to train al-Qaeda operatives in how to conduct suicide bombings against large building structures. Mugnia set up training camps in Sudan, Lebanon, and Iran and went to work. The horrific result of that Sunni-Shiite jihad collaboration was not long in coming. Khobar Towers, 1996, East Africa Embassy bombings in Dar es Salaam and Nairobi in 1998, the USS Cole attack in October 2000, and yes, ultimately, 9-11 itself. We read in the 9-11 Commission report how a, quote, senior Hezbollah operative, unquote, not only, quote, visited Saudi Arabia to coordinate activities there, unquote, but subsequently accompanied some of the Saudi muscle hijackers on flights around the Middle East, including in and out of Beirut, Lebanon, and Iran, during their preparation and training for 9-11. That senior Hezbollah operative was Imad Mugniya. And what he did in Saudi Arabia in October 2000 was recruit the Saudi muscle hijackers. Yes, of course the Saudis knew he was in country and what he was doing there. How did those hijackers fly all over the Middle East, you may wonder, and still have clean Saudi passports 
in which to get US visas prior to entering the United States for the attacks. Well, I was an expert witness in the Havlish legal case, which concluded in late December 2011 with a ruling from Judge George Daniel, Southern District of New York, that Iran and Hezbollah were co-responsible with Al-Qaeda for the 9-11 attacks. One of the other witnesses in that case was Janice Kephart, who had been a member of the 9-11 Commission staff. Her affidavit for the Havlish case explained how the Iranian and Saudi regimes had agreed to place some kind of mark in the passports of the Saudi hijackers that would be recognized by the Iranian border guards so they would know not to stamp their passports coming in and out of Iran. The website for the Havlish case is www.iran911case.com. All of the affidavits of the ex expert witnesses, including hers, are listed there. I also wrote an affidavit for the case, together with friend and colleague Dr. Bruce Teft. It's number six in the list at the website. In it, we documented with open source references the history of the Al-Qaeda, Hezbollah, and Iran jihad terror relationship. And yet, as of this date, 18 years after the attacks of 9-11, and aside from what's in the 9-11 Commission report and what our own Havlish case documents, no one has yet held the Iranian regime officially accountable for what it did to us on that awful day. Worse yet, in the aftermath of 9-11, the George W. Bush administration reached an agreement with the leaders of Al-Qaeda, Iran, and Saudi Arabia to keep Osama bin Laden, his family members, and dozens of top fighters in safe haven inside Iran, guarded, protected by the IRGC, Quds Force, and MOIS. It wasn't until late 2010 that bin Laden moved to Abbottabad, Pakistan, where he was finally taken out by American Special Operations Forces the following May 2011. Neither has that agreement ever been made public to the American people. It is long since past time that this Iranian regime and its Shiite terror proxies in Hezbollah be held fully accountable for their role in the attacks of 9-11. How about it, Mr. President? Thank you for watching. Please share this video and please go to americantruthproject.org and sign up for free for more educational material like this. ATP never charges for our content. We have made it super easy to sign up at www.findberry.com. It just takes a minute and you will never miss an exciting mailing. Thank you.